Hey there guys, Raj here. I hope you guys are well. Today I'm going to share with you an article that I read on the BBC News website today and uh, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it, it was all about perfume and the industry um, and it touched on areas such as like sales and trends and what customers are looking for and kind of like a, a little snapshot of where the industry is at the moment. It was on the BBC website and as you can see here it's called why big brand perfumes may be losing their allure. Um, I'm going to leave the link down to this in the description if you're interested in reading. And um, yeah, I'm going to just basically read it out and give my thoughts along the way. At the end of the video, it'll be, be, it would be cool to hear from you and, and get your thoughts on where you think the industry is, if you agree with some of the things in this article. And um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. So uh, this is on their business page and it also features, as you can see here, um, some comments from the founder of Gallivant Fragrances, which is a new house, which has been featured a few times by a few reviewers on YouTube. His name is Nick Stewart. So the article uh, starts by saying corporate giants such as Estee Lauder, L'Oreal and Coty have dominated the fragrance market, but could that be about to change? Kind of hinting at the rise of niche perfumery, I guess. So Nick Stewart from the brand uh, Gallivant, he says, everything smells the same. Uh, people are getting bored of the big brands and want something different. Um, he's convinced that there is a growing appetite for something more personal that other people don't have. So I think, yeah, th I've definitely noticed this trend when it, when, when it comes to fragrance reviewers. Um, a lot of people like the exclusivity. They like the fact that a fragrance may be a niche fragrance or under the radar sort of designer fragrance is not known and worn by a lot of people, their friends, and they like to smell unique. Um, that's never been something that has appealed to me, but I do, I do understand actually why some people like that. Um, he, Mr. Stewart decided to start his own company after several years, and I didn't realize this, he was the creative director of the trendy Paris house L'Artisan Parfumeur. So that's a brand that's really worth checking out if you want to get into the world of niche fragrances, and they've gone through a bit of, rest of a restructuring uh, over the past couple of years. He says, uh, I wanted to do something clever and interesting, avoiding all the froth, focused on the best materials, and he now sells his fragrances online and uh, via specialist retailers in the US, Italy, Germany, and as far as away as Australia. Um, the Gallivant range of unisex fragrances are inspired by and named after cities such as Tel Aviv and London. Uh, it's not a line that I've, I've checked out so yet, but um, have been seeing a lot of reviews on it. Sounds, sounds interesting. I definitely want to get my nose on them one day. Uh, they, they are packaged in air travel friendly 30 ml bottles, bottles smaller than the standard, standard industry size. Mr. Stewart says that that also makes them more affordable, reflecting consumers' desire to have a variety of fragrances to choose from. So yeah, I think if you're getting into fragrances and this is like really a passion for you, or an interest that you want to pursue, a lot of people have big collections. Nowadays, uh, I don't really have a huge collection but I still like the variety and instead of like, you know, one bottle or two bottles, you want maybe a bit more. Uh, reception from both consumers and retailers, uh, this is for Gallivant, has been positive since the launch earlier this year, but he admits the road to profitability will be a challenge. And he says it's a really tough business to make money in, which is kind of interesting because um, you know, I, I, and I guess maybe it makes sense, you know, uh, an industry that is so competitive, new releases, trying to grab our attention, that they're coming out all the time. And sometimes, you know, I, I wonder uh, the price of these fragrances, even though they are quite high, you'd think that they would make money, but maybe the volume isn't there, or maybe, I don't know, the margin just isn't there, or I'm not quite sure why, why they say it's a really tough business to make money in, may, may, probably due to competition. Uh, he's seeking a slice of the fragrance market, which is worth about 27 billion US dollars a year globally. Uh, but it's dominated by corporate giants such as Estee Lauder, L'Oreal and Coty. So these brands, they own these companies, they, they own multiple brands under their under their under their name. So these firms, uh, they spend tens of millions of dollars a year in a bid to make their fragrances seem impossibly alluring to consumers uh, using celebrities such as Kristen Stewart who is the star of the latest 
Chanel campaign, and you can you can see her here. Uh, the latest, I guess, the, I don't know, but I'm guessing that's the latest Gabrielle fragrance. Or Charlize Theron, who features in ads for Dior's J'adore, where she's like walking around all like seductive in this gold dress or something. Um, seeing glamorous ads on TV, in the cinema, or in magazines means consumers are more likely to try, if not buy, one of the hundreds of perfumes on the market. So I guess consumers, got uh, brands have got to do... I have to put in a lot of work just to grab people's attention. I think personally that the market, the fragrance market is oversaturated in the design and the niche game. Uh, but um, there's a guy here called Michael Edwards. And uh, he's uh, and basically it says here, despite the daunting comp competition, Michael Edwards, who is the publisher of a global perfume database called Fragrances of the World, says some consumers are favoring niche and artisan fragrance brands like Gallivant because they offer something special that none of their friends will have. He believes that innovation in the sector is coming from the smaller brands because the big players are afraid of taking risks. And I definitely see that. There seems to be this homogenous um, bunch of fragrances in the designer brand. You will find some great ones in there. But yeah, everything seems to be too safe and too nice and, and lack some personality, in my opinion and, and this guy's opinion also. Uh, the big brands want a new launch to appeal to a wide range of customers as possible, meaning they often produce something bland, he says. And he goes on to say the future lies in bespoke. Younger people want something of their own. So kind of maybe he's not referring to precisely bespoke fragrances, but something that feels like it's made for you. Uh, and while marketing is crucial, word of mouth is even more crucial. So word of mouth, I, I guess that's includes YouTube, like, you know, us fragrance reviewers. The fact that some of the bigger names in the industry are struggling suggests he may be right. Even Coty, the New York beauty brand behind famous names such as Calvin Klein, Marc Jacobs, Gucci, Hugo Boss and Chloe, has faced headwinds this year. In August, it reported a surprise quarterly loss that was blamed partially on materially higher marketing costs for the launch of new fragrances, including Gucci Bloom, and Hugo Boss Tonic. I haven't tried Hugo Boss Tonic. I wouldn't say I'm in a rush to try it, but my gut feeling is, you know, it might be good. I, I will give it a chance, but my gut feeling tells me, you know, where is Hugo Boss Tonic gonna be one year from now? You know, one and a half years from now, it's probably gonna be heavily discounted and probably forgotten about, but you know, I gotta try it first. Lord, so I don't, yeah, you can't be 100% sure. You know, L'Oreal, which sells fragrances under brands including Yves Saint Laurent, Ralph Lauren and Diesel also reported disappointing sales and profits for its most recent quarter. I mean, that's just one quarter, you know, the best way of looking at it is annual sort of year on year sales and, and, and to find a better trend, but I don't know. Um, but Rashida Kanom, and who is an analyst at market research firm Mintel, says that the industry giants are not taking the threat from upstart rivals lying down. Like Chanel, one of the world's most well, one of the world's most well-known perfume makers, has revamped its uh, its range, including Number Five Low, in time for the Christmas rush uh, last year. It says uh, the new version of Chanel's fragrance aimed squarely at younger generations helped to boost sales of the number five range by a fifth. Um, at the same time, the, oh, I guess this Kristen Stewart was advertising this fragrance, not Gabrielle, I don't know. At the same time, the French company also launched its first new fragrance in 15 years last month, last month Gabrielle with a big budget ad campaign. So it, then it goes on to say, what do people want from a perfume? Which I think is quite an interesting question. You know, some people just want to basically smell good, but I think there's a little bit more to it than that. In this article, it says the experience of wearing the fragrance, not the bottle or the packaging, is still the most important thing for consumers. Uh, Michael Edwards says, who is this uh, publisher of fragrances of the world. Most people want a scent that is pretty easy to like, he says. A fragrance has to entice at first sniff with the top notes, which are compelling, and convince the buyer that it will linger sufficiently long on his or her skin. Above all else, he says, it must make the wearer feel special. And yeah, I get that. I kind of understand that. You know, I think maybe for us guys, it's more about being um, confident or attractive. That's what a lot of people see fragrances as. Me, I, 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 yep, yeah, that's part of it, but it's also about an appreciation for the blending and the artistic side of the, of the industry. 
Retailers, retailers will be hoping that the launch will help return the fragrance sector to modest growth in the UK after two years of what uh, Miss Cannon calls disappointing sales in the UK. Uh, the company uh, which she works for, Mintel, estimates that UK sales will be worth about around £1.5 billion this year, which is huge actually, and it makes it the fifth biggest market globally behind Brazil, the US, Russia and France. And if you think about it, you know, well, I mean, I've always known this, the UK uh, fragrance industry is massive, like there is a lot of demand for it here. To be fifth largest in the world, that's that's pretty big for we're basically just like an island, you know. So as with other retail sectors, she says one of the problems is savvy consumers who try out products in a physical store, but then go online to buy it for less. And, and if you guys watch YouTube reviews, you'll know everybody talks about Latino and Fragrance X and uh, allbeauty.com because you can save a lot of money, right? Manufacturers are spending more on the bottle and packaging as well as marketing in a bid to get consumers to buy their fragrances, which is not the way it should be, but I guess that's how it is. But uh, the power of another popular trick, releasing a fragrance emblazoned with the name of a celebrity, such as Britney Spears, Beyonce or Jennifer Lopez, appears to be waning. So thank God for that. Mintel says that a third of consumers describe this approach as tacky. And um, Miss Cannon of uh, Mintel, she says, celebrity fragrances are just not aspirational in the way they used to be. I'm not sure I would ever have thought celebrity fragrances were aspirational to begin with, to be honest, but um, I think it's on it. Uh, and of course, for Gallivant's Mr. Stewart, this is good news. But while ga some Gallivant buyers, who might be some of you guys watching this video now, want it to remain uh, a tiny brand only they know about for bragging rights. Mr. Stewart says that it's not sustain sustainable and he says, uh, I can't live just selling five bottles a year. So yeah, guys, you know, um, uh, kind of a pretty interesting video. It's always cool to see like, uh, like something about fragrances in the media, whether it be like uh, articles in magazines or online. So yeah, just wanted to share this with you and, and also keen to hear like what you guys have to say. Do you like that the, the way that the industry is at the moment? Are you somebody who has kind of like shunned the designer market because you find it dull and boring and you're exploring niche? Or do you think there's still enough creativity there and to be honest, niche doesn't appeal to you because maybe it's just too expensive and just not worth it. So whatever you have to say, say it. Uh, I will be keen to hear your views. Thanks for watching and um, feel free to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you're interested in my, in my content. Check out my Instagram page and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.